I'm taking Toyota's top-of-the-line Avalon Hybrid on a long road trip to see if it strikes a great balance between luxury comfort and hybrid fuel economy. Will I be impressed? Let's find out. I definitely like its looks. It looks modern and luxurious and disguises its large size very well. The blue badges let you know that this one is the Avalon Hybrid. Overall, I think the shape pulls it off with an understated elegance. I think the interior definitely invokes a sense of elegance and luxury. I really like the two-tone leather look that they've used, and these seats are definitely comfortable. I survived over 600 miles at one shot, so that's definitely something to say. Comfortable, power-adjusted seats that are also heated. Inside the armrest, you'll find storage. There's a tray here, and of course, deeper storage right there with an additional charger as well. Moving forward, you get two cup holders. Here are the controls for the heated seats, and right here is the drive mode control. EV keeps you in all electric under 25 miles per hour. Eco gives you the best fuel economy, and Sport, well, Sport is definitely impressive. More on that later. You get a standard automatic transmission, but you also have a Sport mode, and you can shift it yourself too. No paddle controls on the steering wheel, but I like shifting here better. On the center console, you can hide everything if you want, or open it up, and there's your USB input and also two chargers and some storage. Moving up, you have your dual zone climate control. And on the infotainment screen with Bluetooth, you can sync it to your phone with Toyota Entune. You get control of several apps, and you can go ahead and scroll through them. There's also movies, sports, stocks, open table, which is a restaurant guide, and also traffic, which comes in very handy. The steering wheel gives you controls for the radio and also the menus up front. Over here, you get control for Bluetooth and also audio control. And here, on this display button, you can control this information screen. You get push button start and also Toyota's standard cruise control. You get a normal speedometer, and over here, this one is a little different. Not quite a tachometer, but it does show you whether you're in charge mode, eco mode, or power. Overall, I think Toyota did a great job. It's very luxurious. I like the two-tone look, and the technology is also great. Out back, you get your own vents, which is nice, and there's also seating for three, although we are using it more for storage. I did have two friends back here, and they were definitely impressed with the legroom and overall comfort too. Well, I'm certainly impressed with the trunk because it fit this nice antique vanity as well as our suitcases over here. So definitely a large trunk, even though it's slightly impeded by the hybrid batteries, still very impressive. Powering the Toyota Avalon Hybrid is a two and a half liter dual overhead cam four cylinder, which produces 156 horsepower. With the hybrid motor, total horsepower is rated at 200. Mated to a two-speed CVT transmission, acceleration is pretty good for a hybrid with 0 to 60 taking just 7.5 seconds on the way to a 15.6 quarter mile time. Fuel economy is rated at 40 miles per gallon in the city and 39 miles per gallon on the highway. You can expect 40 miles per gallon overall. So pricing for the Toyota Avalon starts out at $31,750. The hybrid starts out at $35,555. Now, the XLE Touring version that I'm driving starts out at $37,250, and it comes fully loaded. And basically, you're out the door at just over $38,000, $38,000. $270. So a pretty square deal for such a fully loaded car that gets incredible gas mileage. I'm very impressed with the Avalon's range. Traveled over 130 miles already and it says I have 435 more to go. So that's 565 miles basically on a tank of gas and that's a nice distance. And the fact that it doesn't fluctuate whether you're driving in city or on the highway you're always around 40 miles per gallon is definitely very impressive. Okay, let's see what happens when we engage the sport mode. Well, for one, sport mode lights up on the dash. See, it says sport up top there. And oh yeah, 
it's an entirely different personality. When you press the gas in the eco mode, it just kind of slowly lurches up the rev band. But <laughs> it actually develops a personality in sport mode. Very impressive. Kind of like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing. And Toyota, just like Lexus, they've been looking to make their cars really have more feel on the road. They want them to be more fun to drive. And when you listen to that engine and realize that this is a hybrid, <laughs> I think they've done a good job here. North Carolina is full of some pretty cool antiques. Too bad. This one's closed because it's 4th of July. There's also a lot of pretty cool lakes in North Carolina. Route recalculation. Thank you, navigation. You've been very helpful. Well, as you can see, it's an absolute zoo here at the Fiction Kitchen in Raleigh, North Carolina. 1.5 miles. But the navigation system is Keeping me on track. Heading to Durham right now, Duke University. And there's the night look. No red and I like that. Nice blue glow. Now the navigation here is really excellent. Notice how it blacks out the exit that I shouldn't take. It brightens the exit I should take. Very easy to keep you on track. Nice design. Day two of the road trip and the review of this Toyota Avalon. In half a mile, exit the highway at exit 12. And we're headed for downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. Check out the Art Museum, Time Warner Cable Arena. Exit the highway. So here I am at the Beckler Art Museum, which was designed by Mario Bota, who also designed museum in the San Francisco area. It's a very modern design. It was actually built and finished in 2010 and the whole art collection comes from art that was actually in the Beckler's private collection. The Sun actually recently donated the entire collection to this museum in exchange for the city of Charlotte building the museum in the first place. So nice trade-off and now all of his art is inside. So let's take a look. So the Becklers were friends with many of the artists in their collection and Andy Warhol is no exception. Andy Warhol was of course into pop art and the most basic form of pop art was a celebrity and of course the Becklers were pretty well known in art circles and so he commissioned Warhol to go ahead and do their portraits. Now according to the curator the children were actually very scared of Andy Warhol because, of course, he was quite an interesting person. He always carried around a camera and a recorder, and he was constantly taking pictures. He also said that he ate kind of weird food. He was actually a fan of the famous Campbell's soup that he ate, and uh, basically his mom made for him every day. He lived with his mom until she died, actually. He moved her to New York. But if you were... Anybody who was anybody in New York and around the art scene in the 70s, then you wanted Warhol to paint your portrait, and he would for a price. And that's why you see so many celebrities' portraits, because they actually paid him to do their portraits. Of course, he would also seek out people that he thought were icons, and uh, those were the people that he hung out with in his celebrity circles. So this is the Becklers family room as it was in their home on Lake Norman in Charlotte. So this piece by Gunther Hayes is actually a whole bunch of watch springs and apparently in the Becklers house it was on the piano and when it vibrates they all shake. So that's a Swiss timepiece sort of piece of art and that's the 
Swiss connection from the Becklers and this artist too. And here actually is a horse that was also in their house, which the girls kind of rode on like a hobby horse. And it says, please do not touch for a reason because the girls would always touch. And as you can see, it's worn off the varnish a bit. And therefore that's why you don't touch the sculptures. Now there's something about design. Of course, in art, it's very important, but it's also important in architecture and also in car design. And I think the Toyotas as of late, including cars like Scion FRS and also of course the Avalon Hybrid, which I'm testing, and uh, the all new Lexus lineup, they're really, really putting an art to car design. They're really putting an emphasis on design and of course function too, but also looks and they want to appeal to sort of a younger, more modern crowd. And uh, you can certainly equate that to modern art as seen in the Beckler Museum. So the last time I drove this far south on a road trip, I was driving an Infiniti M30 convertible and that car was made in 1991 and 1992 and so it was a totally different animal than this one and it's really amazing in fact a lot of people ask me hey which car is great they say hey you don't say that many negative things about the cars you review and really that's because the cars are really so good these days this toyota avalon hybrid is absolutely everything you'd want in a car that you're going to take on a long road trip it's extremely economical, it's very large, it's very comfortable, it's got all the latest technology, it's easy to use that technology, it integrates with your phone, and uh, it really has everything you want. So I've got to say, driving the Toyota Avalon Hybrid has been a real pleasure on this long road trip. Here we are at the site of the infamous bombing in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. And right around the whole Freedom Riders area it was a big part of the Civil Rights Movement back in the 60s. So I've got the Avalon loaded up with some close friends from Birmingham, Alabama and we're headed to see the Vulcan Man here. And this is a symbol of Birmingham, Alabama, famous for their steel. It's Vulcan, the god of steel. And they really thought that the Avalon was quite comfortable, even in the back seat. So this area is five points south in Birmingham, Alabama. And you have that controversial mountain there. And uh, basically what it was is the place where the trolleys turned around. It's one of the oldest sections, of course, where all the streets come together. And so it's got a lot of development going on. and redevelopment these days with the economy improving. You might be wondering why a car guy wants to go to an antique mall, but here's a reason. You really never know what you're going to find. This is a cool old Ferrari hydroplane model. Nando del Orto. Very nice. This is another good reason to go to antique malls if you're a car guy. And here we are in Atlanta. And I gotta say, it was raining cats and dogs where the home of the Weather Channel is. How appropriate. Anyway, the Avalon actually gripped the road very well. There was a couple spots where some cars would have hydroplaned. I'm talking about very intense rain. Route and calculation. Hello, navigation very intense rain and, and kind of three miles. a lot of traffic too so with the combination of that intense rain and traffic you were getting a lot of uh, spray up from the road and also a lot of water flowing around and uh, I've got to say I felt very confident in the Avalon no problems to report just heading down a main street in Athens Georgia home of not just the University of Georgia but also very famous for bands like R.E.M. And uh, there's several spots around town that are associated with their 
music, album covers, things like that. And uh, all in all, it's just a great college town as well. And this is a staple called The Grit. It's a vegetarian, vegan restaurant. And although I'm not even a vegetarian, I'm very excited about eating there. So we're heading down the street here towards the site of REM's first ever gig in this old abandoned church. And uh, it's now actually condos. So it no longer exists technically, but there it stays. He never really fully removed it because of REM's popularity to Athens, Georgia. Cross traffic warning. Nice to have when you're trying to back out of a spot here in Athens, Georgia. Just arrived in Asheville, North Carolina, and look, a London double-decker bus. Camouflage is Double D's coffee and desserts. Very cool. Well, if you're in the Asheville, North Carolina area, you definitely want to see the Biltmore House, built by the Vanderbilts. Even the drive-in is absolutely gorgeous. So there it is, the Vanderbilt Masterpiece in Asheville, North Carolina, Biltmore House. Extraordinarily impressive. Having tested other luxury cars like Infiniti, Lexus, and BMW, I really think that the Avalon here has most of what those other cars have. I would like to see ventilated seats, but really, that's about it. It's got plenty of chargers, it's got a USB hookup for music, it's got really all the luxury you need, sunroof, and certainly plenty of space, so you're not suffering in the Avalon Hybrid. Like I said, it's very impressive in terms of luxury, and I also like the overall design and ease of use, basic ergonomics. I think it's a very well laid out car. So, on this long road trip, I have to say the Avalon has been an excellent travel companion and to me the most important thing, 40 miles per gallon, any way you drive it, I think that's very impressive. I do think everyone should own a hybrid and if you're in the market for a luxury hybrid, then you definitely have to drive the Avalon here. It's been a great road trip. Thanks for watching. I'm driving Ivan Katz.